Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's dig back into raw therapy and look at how you can use the sharpening module and get the most out of that so you can sharpen your pictures. Let's dig into that. So looking at the control here, I'm going to use a picture that I've used previously to kind of continue on how we can use this so you can have that as a frame of reference. If you haven't seen the video on uh, noise reduction, please go check that out so you can get a good sense of how that works. We're going to focus on sharpening right now. Okay. Sharpening is under the details tab. It's the second one over here and it's right along the top. In order to use it, you have to flip it on. And I'm gonna drill in using the left mouse roller just so I can see a little closer here what's going on. All right, so to walk through what's going on here, first we have the methods. Now these are independent, but I'm just gonna explain this first because it kind of helps to understand what's going on. Unsharp actually hails back to a darkroom technique where they would add blurriness and then use that as a contrast map to actually sharpen the image. It's pretty cool. Sounds counterintuitive, but it actually really works. So Unsharp Mask is now a digital process, no longer analog, um, that you can use employing contrast and employing this, this kind of blurring technique to work with that. Um, there's also another thing here called RL deconvolution which is working the other way instead of enhancing it with the unsharp you're going from underneath it and you're trying to read from the raw image in the data or the color data and trying to restore that and bring it back to the surface so that would be the deconvolution method i'm going to keep it on unsharp for now because that's i'm going to do enhancing that typically works fairly well all right so i'm going to set my contrast threshold a little higher and the blur radius is the amount of allowance that that correction will work. It, it's trying to expand or shrink the range of where it will attempt to blend. You can see that already taking place here. All right. This radius has to do with the method. What's the scope that I'm going to allow it to do that effect. So I'll bring that up just a bit more so we can work on that as we dip into the image. This threshold is interesting because it covers two things. It is actually a uh, curve <laughs> and it's addressing opacity, which that is kind of the top to bottom. And it is also addressing luminance, which is the left to right. So you can move this around on this kind of shrunken curves approach and you have to hold the shift key a little bit to play with that if you want to allow a shorter tonal range of light pass through, then you would make this a smaller range um, be helpful if they had a, a number grid on this, but um, it kind of tells you where you are when you hover. It would be better with a grid, <laughs> but that's that's what it does. Is that you can make those adjustments, and you can either play with the range of overall opacity, uh, blending opacity, or the overall range of luminance using this control. All right, that's how that works. And then the overall amount, once you've made those adjustments in those ranges, can be tweaked as well. That's how those two things fit together. And lastly down here, well, by the way, I should mention this too. This actually plays also into halo control a little bit in that it's trying to prevent the idea that when you start to blend and intelligently sharpen, when you try to match and adjust pixels, it will sometimes result in this kind of ring effect. That's the halo. Okay, Threshold can help you play with that when you adjust the amount of light coming through because you can prevent that kind of extreme outline effect uh, depending on how it looks in your image. Um, you can also flip on the halo control and, and tweak that a little bit further at the bottom. Sharpen only edges attempts to make it so that you're focusing exclusively on edges. It will, it will attempt to find what an edge is in the picture uh, based on color differentials. And you can try to tell it what that tolerance is because sometimes there's a lot of different lights and colors overlapping each other and you may have to tweak that a little bit uh, to kind of get something that's a little bit more uh, worthy of your picture. All right. So now that we've made a few subtle adjustments, I'm going to pull out and we can see I haven't destroyed the image and we've gained a little bit more clarity. I'll turn it off so you can see the difference here of what's actually happening. This is only going to get you so far, okay? Because remember, again, we are we are tweaking and adjusting, and if you overdo it, it's obvious, okay? Because it starts to blend in things you don't necessarily want to have taken away from you <laughs> as you do this. It will start intelligently merging things that you didn't intend to. All right, so you do have to be cognizant of those thresholds and uh, the radiuses as you use them and just use them well. Get a good close look and then pull back and make sure that it's not ripping the image apart as you go. All right? That is sharpening. 
Thank you for having a look at that. I really do hope that was useful and gives you some more insight into how to use this free tool and work on your raw images and really get some powerful free things that you can use to draw out the color, refine the image. And this is a big deal if you're gonna be doing things like printing or using high-res versions of these that are gonna be blown up because the imperfections become very obvious the bigger they get. It doesn't look that bad here because we're kind of at a distance, so to speak but it will be very obvious if you were to print this object. Um, so these are considerations that you wanna look at and this tool can help you get there if your intention is to go that way, all right? Do subscribe if you haven't done that already so you don't miss out on great videos like this. Also leave a comment, ask a question so we can go stronger in our experiences together and I will see you at the next video.